Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. This is Introduction to Relativity and Quantum Mechanics. Let's go now to Lecture 6, where we're going to talk about the geometry of space-time. Let's start with an introduction, a brief introduction. Um, we talked about before that observers that are in different reference frames, different inertial reference frames, um, all observers must agree on the events that occur, so they are observing events. They must agree on the events that occur, but they can, but they can observe different relationships between them as we've discussed before. For example, two events that occur uh, that are simultaneous in one reference frame uh, will not generally be simultane simultaneous in, in any other reference frame. This is the simultaneity, I mean the relativity of simultaneity that we've discussed before, one of the consequences of special relativity. And recall that Einstein's principle of relativity basically says that all observers must agree on the laws of physics, that is observers in all different inertial reference frames, and in particular they must agree that on the speed of light. The speed of light is the same in all reference frames. And because of this, the speed of light c serves as a conversion between time and distance. Because, um, and in particular, um, the speed of light c times something which has units of time has units of length. Okay, so that's how, that's what I mean when I say it serves a conversion between time and distance. Because of this sort of equivalence between uh, length and time, and this conversion that C provides, um, the relationship between measurements of observers that are in different frames can basically be described and reduced to geometrical, to a geometrical problem, um, where we're basically going to set up, as we're going to see, we're going to set up coordinate axes where uh, both axes have units of length, but one of them is a measure of time, ct, and one of them is a measure of actual length. So let's move on to space-time to space-time diagrams now. Okay, now let's consider the situation of, simple situation of Anna and Bob playing catch. So we have Bob over here on the left, Anna over here on the right, they're separated by a particular distance, L, okay? And now let's imagine that at a particular time, Bob takes a ball and he throws it pretty fast to Anna, and Anna catches it, okay? So he throws the ball from left to right, and Anna catches it, and he throws it pretty fast. So let's just, because we're going to do something different in a second, let's call, let's imagine that this is sort of a fast ball, okay? So now let's consider a sort of one plus one. Let me not let me not write that there. Let's consider a um, one plus one D coordinate system. So this is one space plus one time. Okay. Okay, so here's our coordinate system. We have CT on the vertical axis. Again, that has units of length. And X on the horizontal axis. I've shown, I've registered this with the situation above. And so, um, Anna and Bob are here. So the, one of the first things we can do is actually draw what we would call Anna and Bob's world lines. Okay. So as a function, so in time, Anna's not moving. So um, um, and so she doesn't have she doesn't have any variation in x as a function of time, and neither does Bob. 